Hey everyone, just a quick overview on um, not only how to read climographs, but also how to make your own climograph, and as a result, get a much better understanding of biomes and the organisms you would expect to find in these regions and um, different parts of the world. So first, really quick, it's very important to understand that climate, what it is, it's this average. It's the average temperature and it's the average precipitation. And it's, again, I need to reiterate, it's over a period of years. So if we look at um, Las Vegas, for example, um, on every climograph, you'll have precipitation on the y-axis on the left. In this one, it's given in inches. On the right y-axis, you'll have temperature. You, in this one, it's Fahrenheit. Sometimes you'll have centigrade. Over here, centimeters. And on the bottom, we have the year starting with January going through December. Also, temperature, what it is that's given in the line graph. So again, you can see in uh, January, for example, the average temperature in Las Vegas would be about 45 degrees, whereas the average precipitation, which is the bar graph, would be about half an inch. So looking at a uh, different uh, climograph, for example, same idea. We have our precipitation, temperature, and so on on the left and right. Um, you can see these winters, if we look at temperature, again, here's January and February where you'd expect the coldest temperatures. Remember, temperatures to the right, Tem average temperatures below 30. And that even includes November and December. So very cold winters. They do get a decent amount of precipitation, almost 3 inches. So if it's that cold, you can also expect snow. And then here we have a uh, decent amount of rain in the summers. Uh, about three inches and warm temperatures. So we have warm, humid summers. We have cold, snowy winters. So that's a typical Midwest climate like uh, Detroit, Michigan. So what you guys have, you have these terrestrial biomes and you're going to take this uh, climograph data that you're going to figure out and what you're going to do is you're going to take that and match up the key features, the human impact, the plants and animals that you would find in that region and what it would be is that will be your nodes for this unit. So taking biome 1, for example, remember precipitation is a bar graph, and we have, we're not going to worry about temperature here then. So we have precipitation, this one's pretty easy, it's 0.7 throughout the year, and here again this is precipitation, this we're going to be looking at centimeters, so we're going to just draw a bar graph from 0.7 all the way across, and there's our precipitation for the year. Moving on to line graph, line or I'm sorry, temperature. Temperature is a line graph, so um, one we're not going to worry about precipitation here. Temperatures on the right here, given in Celsius. So what we're going to do is our average temperature in January is 14. January is here. We're just going to place a dot at 14. Um, February it's about 15 and a half. Place our dot at 15 and a half. You're going to continue to do that throughout the year. You're going to connect those dots. And then as a result, this will be your climograph for biome 1. So taking your climograph from biome 1 as well as your data from module 21 terrestrial biomes that you already read, you would be able to take your book, match up your data. Um, you just did the climogram, so you're going to cut that out. You're going to paste it there. And then for each climate description, key feature, and so on, you're going to go through and then you're just going to match them up. So it makes sense that the climate of the desert has low precipitation. Temperatures do vary, hot summers, pretty cool winters. Um, the key features you would expect, very low productivity. That's where that 9 of 9 is. These are the regions of the world that have no or very little plant life, no diversity, um, poor organic material. You'd expect cacti as the dominant plants. Egypt, Angola, Mexico, Iran, Saudi Arabia are where we find uh, deserts. The human impacts and then well as the animals. Again, if you don't find it in your module, don't feel free to use the internet as well. And what that'll do is by the end you'll have this idea, you'll have this book, you'll have these notes, and it will make sense why we find tropical rainforests near the equator where you have high temperatures and a lot of moisture, and as you move north and south, you start to, one, lose diversity, but then it'll also start to make sense why you have deserts and where they are, and um, tundra, taiga, and so on. So good luck, have fun, and we'll talk to you later.